Pete Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and today we're going to be talking about this guy. This is the Durafly ME163 that I picked up from Hobby King probably about three and a half, four years ago. Now that is a very long time to do a review on the plane but I actually bought this thing myself and um, I didn't really have an obligation or, or a commitment or any sort of time frame to do any type of review on it. I'm doing this video now just kind of to share my experience with uh, you guys, especially those of you who are you know, flying um, model aircraft like this and want to uh, kind of get something that's a little bit more challenging. Maybe you're intermediate level, you're heading in towards expert level. Um, this is definitely something that I would probably recommend for your next challenge because it is a little bit challenging to fly. As you can probably tell by the uh, nose there, it's got a, a bit of a scarring um, and this little antenna is barely hanging on. There was a little torpedo thing sticking out of the front here. That's broken off. Um, and it's had at one time, I really landed it quite heavily on the belly here uh, where I kind of stalled it. So um, it's, it's had a few rough landings. It's had a bit of a hard life, but it flies beautifully. Um, and so far, so good. I'm, I'm really, really happy with this plane. Uh, now, this was one of the first generation planes, so it came all in one piece. I think the new ones now, the wings detach, uh, but this one came in a great big box and you basically just needed to glue on your vertical stabilizer, put on your prop, charge your batteries and you're up in the air. So, real easy to put together. Now, with this video, what I want to do is I want to start in reverse. So I'm actually going to show you uh, a really nice flight that I did here in my local field about five minutes from my house. Um, and you'll get to see how this thing flies and how well it flies. Uh, because initially I had a lot of trouble with it, obviously going by the scarring. And uh, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. But for now, we're gonna head out to the field. I'll show you how it flies and come back and talk about this guy a little bit more. Now I know after watching that, you're probably gonna be asking me how fast does this plane actually go? Well, the best top speed that I ever got with this was 100 miles an hour, which is about 162 to 163 kilometers an hour. Now, of course, that's not with the stock setup. The stock prop is a six by four from memory. I'm actually running a seven by four um, and I'm running a Hobbywing Skywalker 60 amp ESC. Uh, that is my current setup. 
Uh, now, before I sort of start talking about the rest of the setup of the plane and what else I've changed, I kind of want to show you uh, the first takeoff I ever did with this plane. So you're about to see a very short clip. It's only a few seconds. We'll come back afterwards. We'll talk about um, what I changed on the plane and how I made it fly as smooth as you saw in that uh, first video. Um, and I'll take you through, yeah, just some of the changes that I've made. Okay, here we go. Now, wind's coming from that direction over there, and it is a little strong today, so hopefully this doesn't go left of field. Let's see how we uh, how we do. If I can get this guy off the ground. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 jeez. Whoa, it's way too touchy. Way too touchy way too touchy i gotta dial, dial it down something chronic all right so that takeoff was done with about 65 percent rates and i think i had it at about 50 or 60 percent expo something like that the next takeoff that i did and i'll just put it in as an overlay so you guys can see it i actually dialed down my rates to 35 percent uh, which is quite a significant difference and it made the plane a lot smoother on takeoff because I was able to minimize the throws. So you really have to be very careful about how you set this up. Now, I didn't like the fact that I was really shortening the amount of throw that I had uh, based on my rates. When it gets to that sort of point, what you wanna do is you actually wanna change your control arm here to a lower hole in the servo horn. So initially this came out of the box with the control arm on the very top servo horn, which means you're getting maximum um, swing on that, on that uh, control surface, right? Because if you can imagine, if this is my servo horn, you know, if I turn it down 45 degrees, I get a lot of throw. But if I mount the hole from here all the way down to the bottom, then I obviously have less movement, right? The, the travel is going to be a lot less. Uh, this allowed me to allowed me to bring up my rates, so I have a little bit more throw, but I have more control because the movement isn't as much. Um, if that makes a little bit of sense, so it actually makes for a much smoother flying experience. And if you ever have a plane that needs to kind of be dialed down uh, significantly like that, if it's really touchy on the control surfaces, this is a really good trick to have. And I actually I can't take credit for this. I actually learned this from. Um, RC Informer, he had a plane um, some time ago that he had to do this to in order to make it a little bit more controllable. And I figured, you know what, I'm gonna try it. And sure enough, it works brilliantly. So on a, on a plane like this, that's actually quite um, twitchy, um, this is a, a perfect setup. So that's one thing that I think everybody that gets these planes needs to do is bring down those control arms all the way down to the, ser to the bottom of the servo horn. Um, I think I'm a second hole up, so from the very bottom, I'm the second hole in, um, and that works just fine. So the other thing that you noticed, I was actually taking off from the ground, where on the first video, you didn't see me take off from the ground. I actually wing tossed it. So the way that I normally do this is I pin this wing, because I, I throw with my left hand, because I'm holding the radio with my right, obviously. I pin the wing on the ground. So I actually put the plane on the ground, give it throttle, and then I take one step forward and I launch. Because this is, you know, it's a full body plane. It's not like a wing that's really light and you can just hold it, give it a bit of throttle and chuck it. This, you actually need to have a little bit of momentum to really throw it in the air because it is a little bit heavier than your standard wing. So that's usually the best way to, that I found to, to throw it up. It took a bit of practice. The first time I started doing this, I still had the smaller prop and I found that I had to really take a huge leap forward and actually chuck the plane, like literally throw it as hard as I can into the air because the, the smaller prop, although it gave it a lot of good speed, it didn't have torque, it didn't have that pull. Uh, whilst with the, uh, with the bigger prop, I find that it wants to leap out of my hands. So just one step forward, small step, and just chuck it and it's in the air quite easily. So that's normally how I do it. The reason why I started doing this um, and not using the dolly, which is this little guy here. Now, if you're, not, if you're unfamiliar with this, this actually slides underneath here. There is a magnet there holding it in place. And there's a servo there on like, a, it rotates the magnet. 
And what it does, when it rotates the magnet, it reverses the polarity. So if you've ever played around with magnets, you know that one side attracts to the other magnet. As soon as you flip it around, it wants to pull away. So essentially the servo rotates the magnet, reverses the polarity, and this thing pushes out of the plane. The problem is trying to get this thing to take off. Now I did have a couple of successful takeoffs, but I'm gonna share with you now some of the frustration that I had in trying to take this thing off because it wants to constantly go to the left. Now, whether that's the wheels not being 100% straight or something else, I mean, I found myself giving a lot of right rudder to try and get the plane to fly straight so that I could take off straight. And it just wouldn't do that. It kept constantly wanting to go to the left. And then when you went to take off, it would bounce and it would carry on and I'm like, I'm not enjoying this. This, this thing is so scary to take off with because obviously you could bounce and just nose dart it and break the whole front end. Um, but I'm gonna show you now just a couple of clips. Uh, well, actually more than a couple because I actually took a few uh, videos of me trying to take off with this thing with the dolly. And then at some point I just went, you know what, screw this. And it was actually my friend Paul. Um, so this is how far back this is going because this was before he moved over to Tasmania. It was my friend Paul who actually encouraged me to wing toss it. And we did try to do a bunch of other things like hand launch it from underneath and do all this sort of stuff. Um, and I found wing tossing it uh, is the most effective way for me. I mean, obviously this thing, you could grab it from underneath and chuck it, um, but I, I just, I've learned to do my left hand wing toss. I just grab the plane and yeah, that's how I do it. Anyway, watch the videos. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about this guy. Oop, where's it going? Oh, and it's going left again. Oh. Why does it always want to go to the left? Oh, that wasn't good. Oh, now it wants to go to the right. What's going on here? And off it goes to the left again. All right, let's see if we can make this happen. So yeah, it was uh, pretty frustrating taking off with this thing and using the dolly underneath. Although it was very cool when I was successful with it to come past and drop the dolly and have that extra switch and all that sort of thing. Very, very cool, but at the same time, very frustrating to do. Now, just before we go, a couple of things to note. I've had the plane for about three and a half, four years. I'm still using the stock servos uh, that came with the plane. So both the rudder and the aileron servos are still stock and they're still working perfectly. No glitchy noises, nothing's really acting up. This thing has been solid as a rock. So the electrics in this are actually very good, except the ESC, which as I said, I switched out to a 60 amper because I think the standard for, I think pretty sure it was 40 amps, just wasn't strong enough. It was okay if you were running 3S, but on 4S, it, I found that if it didn't cut out on you, it, when you landed, it was scorching hot. So a 60 amper definitely helped out and uh, this uh, Hobbywing Skywalker uh, 60 amp definitely did the job and it's been doing the job now for probably about two or three years. So very, very impressed with that. Uh, the prop, as I said, Master Air Screw 7x4 prop. I'll try and have links in the video description for the prop and the ESC if you, in case you wanna grab one. Uh, so just a quick explanation on the tape in case you're wondering. I came in uh, a little bit too hot one time. I was, the wind was from behind me and I was landing towards me and I was over near the cricket nets over at the park just over here. And uh, yeah, the, the plane kind of skimmed along the ground a little bit and I was just, like I said, coming in too hot. Hit the uh, wire fence and put a great big uh, cut in the wing. So I brought it home, patched it up and put some tape on it to kind of disguise it all. So while I was doing that, I figured, you know what? I'm gonna put some tape on the leading edge just to help me with orientation and just seeing the plane a little bit better. And uh, that's why you've got the, this tape on here. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have put much tape on there at all. Now, um, I'll leave CG information in the video description uh, because I do have a couple of dots on here for my CG. I believe that there is a, um, 
uh, information about the CG for this thing, uh, I think in the manual or online, but I'll put it in my video description so that you guys know exactly uh, where the CG for this plane should be because even without the battery, it actually balances very, very well on the CG points. So the battery needs to be located right over the CG. Um, otherwise you'll find yourself either being too tail heavy or too nose heavy. Tail heavy is bad because it makes the plane very squirrely. Uh, nose heavy kind of makes it want to dive all the time when you feel like you're obviously pulling back a lot. So um, just, you'll need to play around with it. And because it is such a short fuselage, if you don't have the CG right before you take off, you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble. So I always check CG, even after all this time, I always check to make sure I've got my battery set in the right position, uh, because otherwise, yeah, this thing gets a little bit out of shape in the sky and being as fast as it is, um, you can lose control of it quite quickly. So that pretty much uh, wraps it up for this uh, video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the footage. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my input on this particular plane. I personally love it. I love going fast. Um, I wanna get faster and faster with the, the, the newer planes that I get uh, because my skill level is just rising every time I, I fly, I get a little bit better at it. And uh, yeah, I definitely wanna go past 100 miles an hour. Now, currently I have a plane here that has hit 105 miles an hour and I'm hoping that I can probably even push that to go even faster. But for now, this one will have to do uh, I'm gonna leave you now with one final flight over at the um, Altona flying field where um, we, you may have seen some of the footage in my Instagram, perhaps even Facebook, and I've actually posted up a couple of videos in the past uh, with uh, that particular flying field, but uh, it's one of the more current flights. And uh, yeah, you'll get to enjoy the plane again and uh, see it in action in its current form. But for now, that is it from me. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll speak to you all next time. Woo!